love y'all. Appreciate you. Um, we're just going to jump right in here to Genesis chapter 18, verse 2. So if you have your Bible, Genesis chapter 18, verse 2, we'll just start in the first part of the book. Yeah. I love to see it in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Genesis chapter 18, verse 2, And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself, himself before the ground. And he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant." Uh, we're talking about the Lord appearing to who? Abraham. So if you look at verse 1, this is, this is what's so amazing. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre and in the day. And he sat in the, tent of, in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and he seen these three men standing there. They were angels. Hallelujah. So we understand that they look just like men. And, uh, you know, they can take on the form of a human being. Again, we can be serving an angel unawares. You never know when God might send an angel and see how you're going to treat them. We need to treat everybody as if God sent them to us and not look down our noses on them. So in verse 4, Genesis 18, 4, let a, little, let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Verse 8, and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat they ate they were heavenly beings and they ate food and they talked with abraham praise the lord hello brother izzy it's good to see you on in um chapter 19 if you read verses 1 through 22 in genesis chapter 19 verses 1 through 22 wow all kinds of angel stuff going on here praise the lord let's look at judges chapter 3 i'm sorry judges chapter 13 verse 6 um yeah i don't think we understand just how amazing the spirit realm is and uh, I, then i think there are other people that put way too much emphasis on it Judges chapter 13, verse 6. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told me his name. But he said unto me. So this angel being, I mean, she knew. She was not mistaken. It, it, this is an angel of God. Hallelujah. And she's like, this is scary, but he spoke to me. Wow. Can you imagine that? Look at what he said in verse 7. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Oh, wow. And I'll tell you what, sounds like, um, you know, the angel going to Mary telling her, you know, if, if you will do this, you're going to be, you're going to conceive of the Holy Spirit. You're going to have the Messiah. You are blessed above all women. And then the angel went to Joseph. Does that sound right? Uh-huh. You know, there, God ain't going to send us something that we can't understand and comprehend, saints. So common angels are amongst us. They look just like you and me. Might want to be careful how you treat folk. Yeah, might have been an angel. And the cool thing is we're going to judge the angel saints. So if we're going to judge the angels, don't you think we need to stop judging one another and learn mercy? Hello, Sister Wanda. God bless you. I love you. Um, there are a hun literally 104 appearances of angels unto men. 104. And that's just what we find in the Bible. Okay, you could write volumes and volumes about what Yahshua did, what Jesus did for us. And I'm sure there's hundreds of millions of times that angels have appeared and, and been amongst us, and we have no clue. But just in the scriptures, there are 104 appearances of angels. So angels also, saints, have personal souls with emotions, okay? Okay. Now, let's, let's look in the scriptures. Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Luke 15, 1 through 10. So let's just truck on over here to the, um, the New Testament. And we're going to find out. Hello, uh, 
Mr. Charlie, how's it going today? God bless y'all. Let's talk about angels. Luke chapter 15, verse 1 through 10. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees. Yeah, y'all, we got some religious folks in the crowd. Come on, we, we love them too. Saying, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this peril un parable unto them, saying. Wow, this is interesting. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he has found it, he lay it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents, more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Check that out, saints. That means that the angels, and we've heard this so many times, but it might mean a little bit more to you looking at it in this context, that angels have feelings. They have emotions. Wow, that is so cool. Hey, Sister Sharon, we're talking about angels with their own personal souls, their own personal emotions. And I'm just going to read that again. Luke 15, 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one, one sinner that repents more than over the 99 just persons which need, you know, they need no repentance. Saints, the holy angels are just hallelujah, raising their hands and worshiping the Lord and, and just rejoicing with great emotion. They have emotions. Over one sinner. Can you imagine? In verse 8 it says, Either that woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. I say to you, likewise, verse 10, Luke 15, 10, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Wow. Wow. That is so cool. They actually have emotions. Yeah. Imagine that. So there's so many scriptures. Let's, let's skip over to, um, Let's go to Revelation 12, 12. And this is about angels having emotions, having, having their own personal uh, souls and emotions. Um, let's see. Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell with them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So they have feelings, they have emotions. I like the fact that all ye heavens and you that dwell in them, that's spirit beings, angels, yeah, rejoice. And then there's also those that have wrath. So saints, we're seeing this. They have, um, they have vengeance. They have desires. Angels have pride. Ezekiel twenty-eight seventeen. Yeah, Ezekiel twenty-eight seventeen. Pride. Well, we know that Satan fell because of his pride. So that means that they have the emotions, the feelings that we have. I, I think sometimes we forget how great God is and what he has done and how he has made us. Ezekiel twenty-eight seventeen. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Wow. Yeah, the angels, if they fell with, with uh, Satan, guess what? They had to have their own thoughts, ideas, understanding, and they said, hmm, I'm going to do something different. Wow, that sounds to me like God gave them a choice too. They have other soul passions, feelings, and desires. Common angels, just, just the regular angel saints. I'm not talking about the archangels. We're just talking about regular old run-of-the-mill angel. I'm like, hey, 
I don't care if he's the archangel or a regular run-of-the-mill old Joe Angel. You show up, I'm going to be like, woohoo, Jesus, that's an angel. Dude, isn't that awesome? They've been in our services and we didn't even know it, saints. They are personal, personal spirits with intelligence and wisdom. God ain't going to send you no simpleton angel. He's going to send you one that's got some sense in his head, saints. Come on now. I think God can create us and create everything we see. He can send us an angel that's got some sense, okay? Yeah, and we ain't going to make no joke about that. Somebody said, I don't care if you just send me an angel. I don't care if he's, you know, just send me an angel. I got the Holy Ghost, okay? I got the Holy Spirit, so what else do I need? If the Lord chooses to send me one, though, I'm certainly not going to be like, oh, I don't want no angel. So, anyhow, personal spirits with intelligence and wisdom. 2 Samuel 14 and 20. 2 Samuel 14 20. Let's see what we come up with here. Personal spirits with intelligence and wisdom. Okay, I love it, Lord. I like to see what the scripture says. I ain't going to bring you something and just try to tell you. So I'm going to just go to the scripture. I have nothing to gain except eternity. And I have a soul to lose. So I ain't going to lead nobody astray. If I can't find it in the word, I ain't going to bring it. And let me tell you what. If somebody bring me something that ain't in the word, I'm going to let them know. Yeah. Um, let's see. 2 Samuel 14 and 20. It says, To fetch about this form of speech... Hath thy servant Joab done this thing? And my Lord is wise according to the wisdom of an angel of God to know all things that are in the earth. Oh, that is so cool. Think about that. According to the wisdom of an angel of God to know all things that are in the earth. So the angels have been given the ability to know stuff. Okay, we've been given the Holy Spirit. Yeah, guess what? We should be in tune with Holy Spirit so we know stuff, okay? If you get in tune with the Holy Spirit, you're going to know stuff. You're going to stay in this word. Let all those that hunger and thirst after righteousness be filled. Uh, let's go over to 2 Samuel 19, 27. 2 Samuel 19, 27. Well, it would help if I get out of 1 Samuel there. 1927 says, And he has slandered thy servant unto my Lord the King, but my Lord the King is an angel of God. Do, th do therefore what is good in thine eyes. Wow. But my Lord the King is an angel of God. Wow. With wisdom. Okay? There ain't no angels that are stupid. Okay? And I don't mean that to be rude. They have the wisdom of God, okay? Now, think about that. If they've got the wisdom of God, then those fallen angels, uh-huh, they got the wisdom of God, too, and they know how to trick you and deceive you according to the word of God. If Satan himself is an angel of light, then his ministers are also able to transform themselves into angels of light. Saying, I don't care how good it looks, test the spirit, the, per, the uh, common angels, they have personal spirits with intelligence and wisdom, meekness, modesty, holiness. Oh, I like that one. Let's do that one. Holiness. Mark 8, 38. Holiness. The word of God says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Um, you know, it's the word saints. I didn't make it up. Mark 8, 38, reads on this wise, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with, his, with the holy angels. Wow. Um, that's pretty strong, because if you read verse... Well, let's just read 36, 37, and 38 together. Mm. I'm just going to start. I'm going to go backwards a little bit because we're talking about angels and holiness. The angels of God, the holy angels, are holy. And they exude holiness. 
Mark chapter 8, verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him de deny himself and take up his cross. Well, it's actually a stake. And follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the gospels, the same shall save it. Yeah, for the sake of the gospel, the truth, the word of God. Or what, let's see, verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? Verse 38, we're talking about holiness. We're talking about holy angels. I already said it. You, you're not going to see God apart from holiness. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Saints, I hope you bind this word to you and you say, Lord, let me come to you and, the, and, and worship you in the beauty of holiness. Father God, we come to you. We obey you. Lord, your angels obey you. They have knowledge. Your angels have their own willpower. Lord, they have ability to speak languages. They have a heavenly language. Lord, you've given that to us. They have other spirit faculties. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us, Lord, to be holy like Yeshua and the holy angels. How about obedience? Let's talk about the angels having personal spirits with intelligence. How about obedience? This is one of my favorites. Psalm chapter 103 verse 20. This is one of my favorite ones. I have it memorized. God's angels excel in strength to protect our personage, property, and possessions. That's one of my favorites to just declare and decree. But let me read it to you out of the scripture. Psalm 103 and 20. This is how the angels obey God. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Saints, the word of God, the holy angels hearken unto the word of God. If you're speaking the word of God and the holy angels are listening to you speak that holy word of God, according to God's word, they're going to obey his commands. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? They obey. We could take lessons from them. A lot of people don't realize that angels actually watch us and the Bible says that they learn from us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. And yeah, I'm kind of guilty if they're looking at me, honey. They learned some bad stuff I had to repent of. Saints, we need to repent before the Father because we've been saying some stuff and doing some stuff we didn't need to be doing and it wasn't holy. So I'm just going to say, hey, brother, sister, you know what it is? Get rid of it. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Well, I want to be with the Lord and his holy angels. Get it right, saints. I praise God for time, and I praise God for mercy, and I praise God for his grace. Let's check this one out. The ability to speak languages, 1 Corinthians 13.1. Yeah, boy, we could dive off into that one, couldn't we, saints? Well, da-da-da-da this and da-da-da-da that. Let's just look at the scripture. We ain't going to read nothing into it. We ain't trying to interpret nothing. We're just going to read the scripture, saints. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I ain't got no love, what's it matter how many tongues I got, sister, brother? Hmm? Yeah. Blah, blah, da, da, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It says, if I ain't got no love with all them tongues, I became as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So we're not going to get into all this. We're just going to say this. The Word of God says, Mm -hmm. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, if I don't have love, what good does it do me? Mm -hmm. So we ain't teaching about tongues today. We're just saying the angels got it. So if the angels got it, that means I can get it. But I got to want it. They have so many facts listed in the word of God. There's no way you could cover it all in an hour, saints. They are glorious. Luke 9, 26. 
They are immortal. Luke 20, 36. Angels are powerful and mighty in body. Isaiah 37, 36. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 10. Let's look at Revelation 18, 1. They are powerful and mighty in body. Guys, we need to be careful what we ask God for because, you know, you could die with a heart attack. Yes. Seeing an angel. Ask God to prepare you. Okay, there's some stuff we just don't need to dabble in, saints. I ain't worshiping no angels to get to heaven before I'm supposed to. Come on, think about that. You need to ascend. No, you need to stay right here in your body and worship the Lord in the spirit mm -hmm, of truth. And you need to worship the Lord right here in the beauty of holiness. He's asking us in his word to worship in spirit and in truth. The holy angels, Revelation 18, 1, they are powerful and mighty in body. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. Ooh, I don't know about y'all, but I can feel the power of those words to see a powerful, holy angel coming in the glory of God and the brightness of the firmament of God. Wow. Saints, let's just figure this out. If they can be real pretty, mm -hmm, they can also be terrifying. Yeah. Let's just stay close to Yeshua. They are heavenly spirit beings. They are not demons. Okay? The holy angels. It says not demons. Now let's just check out. Let's check that out. Not demons. Acts. You got some crazy stuff people are teaching out there. Let's just go to the word. That way we can't get confused. Acts chapter 23 verses 8 and 9. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. Those people were confused even back in that day, saints. So if the Sadducees and the Pharisees were confused... Well, it sounds like the Sadducees were confused because the Pharisees confessed both. There's got to be confusion in the church today because if there was confusion then, there's confusion now. God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. He's the author and finisher of our faith. So if I have faith, then I know that there is a resurrection and that there are angels and there are spirits. But again, Acts 23, 8 and 9 for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. Wow. Saints, how you want to fight against God? Ask the Apostle Paul. It doesn't work. You might as well just go on and do it God's way. The holy angels, they're not demonic. They are truly of the Lord. And if you will test the spirits, according to 1 John chapter 4, you're going to know if they're of the Lord or if they're of the enemy. Because the enemy can also transform himself into an angel of light. Mm, figure that one out. Um, now, check this out. According to general facts about angels, they are limited in knowledge. Hmm. God is the only one that knows everything, saints. Spirit of God, who is holy and righteous, Kadesh Ruach, Holy Spirit, he reveals all things to us. So I want to be in relationship with my Lord, and I want to be filled and refilled with the Holy Spirit. I don't need an angel that could possibly... Not give me everything I'm supposed to be knowing by the Holy Spirit. So when you've got people saying, my angel did it, my angel this, my angel that, my angel something else. I need to question and see, you got even got the Holy Ghost? Yeah, let's think about that, saints. Holy Spirit. Because angels are limited in knowledge. 
Mark 13, 32. Mark 13, 32. So what are you saying? Well, I ain't saying nothing I can't find in the scripture, so let's go in the scripture. Mark 13, 32. I'm over in Luke right now. Give me a second. 13, 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Ooh, so angels don't know everything? Let me ask you something, saints. Why are people worshiping angels? Why are people getting into all this angel stuff when they're limited in knowledge? Hmm. We need to think on this. Now, they are higher than man. Psalm chapter 8, verse 5. Angels are higher than man. Why? Because they have spirit bodies. Yeah. Hello? We haven't arrived yet. You've got to die. The flesh has to die. Well, that's where all that angel worship is coming from, saints. Oh, I'm dead in the flesh and my spirit ascends. Yeah, you have an outer body experiences and God said, no, you're going to do it anyhow and call it Jesus. Liars. Oh. Yeah, bring it. Higher than man. Psalm chapter 8, verse 5. I'm going to worship the Lord of lords and the King of kings. I'm not going to worship an angel. And if I got to worship an angel to get in the back door of heaven, that makes no sense. Because if, if I do that, I'm not going to make heaven when this body really does. When I lose this body suit, yeah. I'm going to be with Jesus for eternity. And I need to get straight what spirit I'm worshiping. Psalm chapter 8 verse 5. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Hmm. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, and thou mightest still the enemy, that thou might, mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is a man that thou art mindful of him, and the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. I receive that in Jesus' name. Angels don't need rest. Revelation 4, 8. They can eat food. We just read that. Genesis 18, 8 and 19, 3. And also in Psalm 78, 25. They can appear visible and invisible. Mm, interesting. Numbers chapter 22, verses 22 through 35. And John chapter 20 and 12. Let's look at that. They can appear invisible and visible. And also Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. But we're going to look at John 20 and 12. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Yeah, look at there. They can appear visible and invisible. Interesting. Think about that, saints. We don't ever know how many angels might be with us when we're worshiping the Lord and we're, when we're just sitting there at the feet of Jesus and just, just basking in his presence. They operate in the material realms. We've seen that in Genesis 18, 19, Genesis 22, 11, 2 Samuel 24, 2 Kings 19, 35, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 12. Angels are amongst us saints, but we're not supposed to be worshiping them. We don't get our power and strength from angels. We get our power and strength from Holy Spirit. If I got to have an angel standing behind me before I can do anything, where is the Holy Spirit? 
I might work with the angel. The angel might be sent to work with me or be with me or do something for me on my behalf because they are ministering angels. But saints, we have Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us. That's why we need to understand how how sensible we need to be about spirit beings and, and angels and not give them any honor and worship and glory. That belongs to God alone. Angels travel at inconceivable speed. If you will read Ezekiel chapter 1, wow. Revelation 8, 13. Revelation 9, 1. Angels ascend and descend. Now we see this on a Jacob's ladder. How amazing is that? They ascend and descend according to God's will. They bring things. They take things back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take me, Lord. Woohoo! Genesis chapter 28, verse 12. We're just going to go there. Come on now. This is exciting. If you haven't ever looked in the Word of God about angels and what their, what their work is and what they do, they're amazing, but they're not to be worshipped. Genesis 28 and 12. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending. Oh, that is so cool. Woo, yeah. Mm, I've been on a ladder many times, moving furniture, loading furniture in and out of a truck. Mm -hmm, let me tell you what. That's one ladder I wouldn't mind climbing, saints. John chapter 1, verse 51. They ascend and descend. Uh, we've already talked about them speaking languages, 1 Corinthians 13, 1, and they can do anything a man can do, including sin. Come on, saints. Yeah, the holy angels were holy, and they said, ah, I'm going to disobey the Father. I'm going to go do this stuff over here with Satan. They sinned. Oh, yeah. They were created by Christ Jesus, who is God in the flesh, before the earth. Before the earth. Job 38, 4 through 7. A lot of folks don't realize about Job, but it's like, mm -hmm, like the oldest book there is. It, it talks about things that you ain't going to find anywhere else, saints. Job chapter 38 verses 4 through 7. Check this out. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who has laid the measures thereof if thou knowest, or who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the corner stone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. The morning stars, those are angels. My horse's name, the last part of her name is star. That means angel. Yeah. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. The sons of God, the holy angels. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the... I could just go on and on, saints. They were created before earth the way that we know it. Jesus, our Messiah. Wow. God in the flesh. Psalm 148, 2 through 5. Colossians 1, 16. They were created before the earth. They're not to be worshipped. I'm just going to turn there just so you get this. Want to run that home, saints? Want to just hammer that nail into the... Mm, yeah, just hammer it in there. Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your, re of your reward. That means judge against you, deceive you, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Saints, you're going to have a lot of people that are going to sit there and tell you that you can... Um, 
get along with these angels and um, interact with them and just mm, ascend. Okay, here is the scripture. Hello, Sister Bridget. God bless you. Uh, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Saints, if they're telling you to ascend, they are telling you to worship angels. You cannot do this without knowing things that you don't need to know. Yes, it's possible. But if they come and they tell you and they get you distracted and they get you to go, da -da 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 -da, this is the scripture that you need to tell them about. You need to tell your angel worshiping friends that angels are not to be worshipped. Period. End of discussion. It says, I'm going to do it one more time just to run that nail home. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding now listen intruding into those things which he has not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding the head who is Yahshua Hamashiach from which all the body by joints and bands have nur having nourishment ministered and knit together increase with the increase of God. Listen, saints, get this if you get nothing else. Holy angels were created by Jesus Christ. They are not to be worshipped. There's your scripture. I don't need I don't need to do all that. I don't need to ascend. I am seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus according to the word of God. It's talking about spiritual things, saints. If you have an ear to hear, hear. If you have eyes to see, see what thus saith the Lord. Now think about this. Holy angels, they have power. They are organized into principalities and powers with thrones. Colossians 1.16, right here. Colossians 1.16, just go back one or two pages. For him, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. They are organized into principalities and powers with throne saints. Sister Bridget, you did a teaching, you did a, um, a study on this and we went over that. It would be a great teaching to bring to the body of Christ. People don't know this stuff because you're not being taught in church. I'm saved. Now that I'm saved, I need to be discipled. Hello. I need to know what thus saith the word of God. So... You also, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, you see that we have spiritual armor for a reason because the enemy has angels that have fallen and they are the ones that are coming against us in the spiritual warfare. Okay, we need to know how to fight the good fight of faith. We need to know how to put that armor on and we need to know how to stand against the wiles of the devil. But if you don't know... What the wiles are, you'll fall for anything. Oh, well, that's not of the devil. It looks holy and it smells holy and it appears to be holy. Yeah, you ever seen a sheep in wolf's clothing? Oh, wait a minute. I got that wrong. Sorry about that. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Well, you know, there could probably be sheep in wolf's clothing too. I don't know why they would want to do that though. Yeah, that would be a joke. But think about that, saints. If you, you have to have discernment. Ask the Lord for discernment, not suspicion, discernment, so that you understand what a spirit, uh, an evil spirit is, what Holy Spirit is, or what a human spirit is. That's what discernment is about. It's not about being um, suspicious of people. You have the Holy Spirit, you will have a witness in you. If you have Holy Spirit in you, you're going to know. You're going to give people mercy. You're going to give people grace. You're going to know that what they're saying sometimes ain't lined up with the word of God, but you're going to love them anyhow because they're trying. Woo, I'm going to preach. 
Um, these angels are innumerable. Saints, that we couldn't even begin to count how many there are, so don't even try. There's like 14 billion, 300 million, okay? No, there's no way of us knowing. We could have a room full of angels and we wouldn't even know it. Why? Because we're not tuned into the Holy Spirit. I don't need an angel to come tell me the Holy Spirit is there. Think about that. You got the Holy Spirit. Now, angels are to be judged or ruled by saints. We need to get this right, saints. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3. It's like, oh, I can't judge the angels. Don't you think you need to figure out what, what this is all about now? Uh-huh. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? It's time we woke up. It's time we grew up. It's time we showed ourselves approved by studying the word of God for ourselves. I don't mind teaching folk, but I'm going to encourage you. No, I'm going to make it mandatory that you read the Bible for yourself and study it. Yeah. Angels are subject to God. Matthew twenty-two thirty. Angels are interested in earthly affairs. Now, this is very interesting to me because angels are interested in earthly affairs. And I happen to live on the earth. You happen to live on the earth. And they're interested in earthly affairs. Check this out. Luke chapter 9, verse 26. Man, I got to breathe. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 9, 26. This is so awesome. I love the word of God. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. They're interested on affa on, uh, in the affairs on earth, saints, because they're sent to earth to work for the Lord, unawares to us most of the time. Luke 15, 7 through 10. Luke 15, 7 through 10. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. We've already read this. It's like they have a concern about what goes on on earth. They're watching us, saints. Yeah. Uh, 1 Timothy 5.21. This is a good one to cover. 1 Timothy 5.21 gives you a better understanding. Why are they interested in earthly affairs? They work for the most high God, the only true God, the creator of heavens and earth. He's sitting on the throne. What's he want to come down here for? Huh? He sends his angels. They hearken to his commandments. It's, I mean, he knows everything. He's omnipotent. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. But the angels are here for a reason, saints. 1 Timothy 5.21 Then, okay, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. See, the angels are recording everything. They're scribe angels. They're writing everything down. Yeah, just think about how they read in your mind right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be careful what you think, Saint, because it's going down in the book. It's be it is written. Aha. Uh First -huh. Peter chapter one verse twelve. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Uh, you know, if mama ever said you're going to eat them words, there was a reason. The angels are writing everything down, saints. 1 Peter 1, 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into. Interesting. Have y'all ever heard of that? They actually watch us and learn from us. You don't believe that? Let me show you the scripture. Oh, yeah. I got to talk to a couple old boys, good old boys. And I told them about the angels being taught wisdom by the church. They're like, that ain't in the Bible. I said, 
you do not want to mess with this because I'm fixing to show you, you know, yeah, want to bet? Just take them to the scripture saying it will shut them down every time. Scripture. That's the only way Jesus fought the devil. Holy word. Holy word. He was the word made flesh. But when he went into the desert, how did he fight Satan? When Satan come to him after them 40 days of fasting. Uh huh. He come to him and tempted him. And Jesus said, the word, the word, the word. It is written, is it written, it is written. I'm telling you, saints. Look at this. 1 Corinthians 4, 9. Angels are being taught wisdom by the church. Now, let me ask you a question. You think the angels are learning wisdom from folks that are given lip service? You think the holy angels are going to do anything that somebody does and they know that if it's real or not coming out your face, the pie hole? They know. Guess what other saints know too? 1 Corinthians 4 and 9. I love this. When you sit there and you break down the word of God, people are like, wow, I didn't know that was in the Bible. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible I don't know about yet. I'm going to find out though. God let me live long enough. I'm going to find it. 1 Corinthians 4 9. Check this out. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were, appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Mm. Why would we, why would we be, be spectacles to angels? Well, because they are taught wisdom by the church. Wow, them angels are like, hmm, that one's real. He'll suffer anything for Jesus. Mm-hmm. Hope my faith can be that way. Try Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. You got to get that one again, saints. The just angels are being taught wisdom by the church, the called out ones, the ecclesia. Hmm. That's something to think about. Selah. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Wow, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Oh, Lord, this is amazing. Angels are innumerable. They're to be judged or ruled by saints. I'm sister with a testimony. You are a saint with a testimony. You got to get this right, saints. The only way it's going to be right and only way it's going to be tight is if you stay with Jesus 24-7. Yes, you can do that. You can separate yourself. You can be therefore holy even as God himself is holy because he said without holiness no one shall see the Lord. Don't want to hurt your feelings, saints, but it's time that we separated ourselves from the world and that we did look different. We don't have to look stupid. We don't have to look kooky but we do have to be different because we are different we are peculiar we are not supposed to look like the world we are not supposed to sound like the world we are not supposed to fit in with the world and if you do and you call yourself a saint of god you need to get delivered i'm not going to sugarcoat it Nobody has arrived. We're supposed to build one another up and encourage one another. I'm encouraging you to get your act together because you're the only one, you and Jesus, that can do it. And if you love him like you say that you love him, you will die for him. You will put everything to the side. You will drop it and you will follow the Lord. Saints, people are dropping off like flies. Folks need prayer every day. The holy angels are watching you and watching me as to what our reaction is going to be. 
Are we going to respond the right way or are we going to respond like the world? I'm preaching now. Angels are subject to God, Matthew 22, 30. Not only are they subject to God, but they're going to be judged by God's children, the sheep of his pasture. They look into the things of salvation. They desire to look into the things of salvation. Holy angels, check this out. They they want to know, okay, wow, that's why there's rejoicing in heaven by one sinner that, that gets saved. First Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 12. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. First Peter 1 verses uh, first, first Peter 1 10 through 12. Now verse 12 reads on this wise, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into. Saints, angels are real. They are amongst us. They are watching us. They are writing everything down. They are reporting. And they are, Lord, when they observe us, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9, let them observe us worshiping you, adoring you, and treating our brothers and sisters with love and respect and honor. Lord, let the angels see that we will stand in the face of persecution. We will tell our brothers and sisters, this is the word. This is the word. And I love you enough to tell you word, brother and sister. You ain't got to like me. But you got to love the Lord. And if you love him, you're going to love me because I'm going to tell you the truth. You might not like it, but that's your problem. I love you anyhow. I love you enough to tell you what it is that you need to do to get it right. I don't want nobody to die and go to hell. I don't want nobody to be separated from Jesus Christ for eternity. I don't even want I don't I don't want anybody to leave this earth without knowing Yahshua as Lord and Savior. The problem is, saints, we, we pick him out and we say, oh, we want you as our Savior, Jesus. But I don't know about all this Lord thing. I want to be Lord of my own life. You cannot be the Lord of your own life. You're not even equipped to be the Lord of your own life. If Jesus is your Savior, then you need to make him the Lord and Master of your life. Because until you make him the Lord and Master of your life, he is going to be a man on a cross. He saved me. Once saved, always saved. I can just scoot to eternity. Guess what, saints? That's not all the warnings that they gave us in the scriptures. We got to live holy if we want to see the Lord. I didn't make this up. The holy angels know what I'm talking about and they're writing it down. And I ask the Lord to bind his word to you so that the word of God will come forth with fire, with power, with deliverance. It's time to stop playing church, saints. The angels ain't playing church. We are. It's time to get this right, saints. I love you. But I got to tell you like it is. I can't sugarcoat it. You can get you can get a little tiny bit of poo-poo and put it in your brownies. Are you going to take it? No. So I am not going to sugarcoat nothing and make you swallow it. I'm going to give it to you exactly the way it should be. You decide if you want a little leaven. A little leaven will leaven the whole lump. A little bit of dog crap in your brownies will ruin the whole pan of brownies. We need to have the truth. Okay? The truth. And we don't need to be worried about who likes us and who accepts us. I'm accepted and beloved of the Lord. I've been ordained of the Lord. You are accepted and beloved of the Lord. You are accepted and beloved of the Lord. You have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. These angels know who you are. These angels know what you represent. These holy angels know. And believe me, saints, if the holy angels know where you're at, the devil and all his imps and his angel buddies... 
they know where you're at too. So saints, if you want to fight the good fight of faith, I'm going to encourage you today that you understand that the angels are subject to God. You are subject to God. I am subject to God. If we'd get the fear of the Lord back in our churches, we wouldn't be crying out to God for revival because we wouldn't be dead needing revival. Okay? We wouldn't need resuscitation. Saints, I'm not I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but you have every spiritual blessing. You have been called by God out of the darkness into the light. You have been empowered. You have been equipped. You have been prepared. You know the word of God. You know what God did for you. And if all you can do is give your testimony, that might save somebody's life. Testify. You ain't got to preach a sermon. You just got to tell people how good God is and what he did for you and how he saved you and how he lifted you up and how he blessed you and how he's provided for you. They might need to hear from somebody other than just the preachers and the prophets. They might want to just hear from the common angels. There ain't a thing wrong with being a common angel and there ain't a thing wrong with being a common Christian. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it. If you're common, that means you're going to look like the rest of them. You're going to talk like the rest of them. You're going to, you're going to worship like the rest of them. Maybe we need to come together and be all things in common. And if we say, Jesus, let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. And let me speak the word over you and, and let it just come out of the, the belly and let it hit your belly so that you can be empowered and equipped, not by what I said, but because the word of God in me is rich. And if I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing, you're blessed with every spiritual blessing. None of us is any better than the other saints. There are rankings of angels and there are rankings in the church. But at the end of the day, God says, be no respecter of persons. And I can guarantee you those angels are writing down if you're a respecter of a person. They are being taught wisdom by us. Are you teaching the angels? Think about that. Yes, you are every day. They desire to look into the things of salvation. They observe us. I thought I think this is really co cool. They can cook. Yeah. Angels cook. First Kings nineteen, five through seven. We got we got angels cooking food in Jesus. Wow. You know that's got to be some good stuff. They wear garments, John twenty and twelve. They appear unawares. We're gonna look at that one. Hebrews thirteen two. Hebrews thirteen two. He can brew me a cup right now, buddy. Mm -mm -mm. Get one of them angels. Hey, Lord, if that coffee pot comes on right now, we fixing to talk. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but that's funny. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I just, I just humor myself. I love y'all. I'm sister with a testimony. Lady asked me, she said, so I know this might be a stupid question, but what does SWAAT mean? That's not a stupid question. That's what I want it to do. Have people ask questions. It means sister with a testimony, saint with a testimony, sinner with a testimony, or it could be saint, sinner, sister with an amazing testimony. Everybody's got a testimony. Some folk got an amazing one. So no, no question is, is a bad question. Hebrews 13, 2. Um, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Wow. I know we've had angels come to us before. Um, angels have been tested, saints. Job 4, 8, 1 Timothy 5, 21. They dwell in heaven, Revelation 12, 12. Yeah, that's awesome. They stand before God, 2 Chronicles 18, 18. Christ is better than angels, Hebrews 1, 5 through 2, 16. The angels have work. Isn't that amazing? Angels have work. They drive spirit horses. They guard gates. They wage war and actual bodily combat. They execute judgments. Angels minister to saints. Angels rule nations. Mm -hmm. 
They help each individual. They sing praise and worship God. They strengthen us in trials. They lead sinners to gospel workers. Oh, come on, saints. you got to feel that one. Ask God to command his holy angels to lead sinners to you. Oh, you got to be available. Woohoo! Bam. If you're available and you ask God, he'll give you God appointments. But don't ask him and then, oh, I'm too busy. Okay, I'm sorry. I got to be somewhere, Jesus. I can't be talking to this lady right now. <laughs> Get over yourself. You want to pray and ask God for a God appointment, then you best be ready to make that God appointment. You'll get where you need to go right on time. That holy delay might be because an angel heard you asking God to send somebody to you. They lead sinners to gospel workers. I don't know about y'all, but we gospel workers, okay? Get that right. You signed up to work, not to sit on the pew and complain. They do, Oh, this is really cool. Angels direct preachers. Woo, yeah. Mm, yeah, I feel like preaching now. Angels appear in dreams. I had a lady call me. Uh, she texts me, actually. She's like, I had a dream. And in the dream, da-da-da-da-da. And she said, what do you think? And then she sent me another text before I could answer it. She says, never mind. I know what you think. I'm going to listen to what God said in the dream. I'm like, wow, that means that they're starting to figure out I ain't going to tell you something that ain't in this word. And more than likely, I already told you to start with, you just wasn't listening. I ain't got to worry about the message being um, what happens after I deliver it. I just got to deliver it, saints. Angels minister before God. Angels bind Satan. Angels guard the abyss. Angels regather Israel. They're doing it right now. Angels protect saints. That's me and you. We're protected. The angel of the Lord encampeth about them which believe, and he shall deliver them. Oh, that's a promise. Angels separate the good and the bad. Angels accompany Christ to earth. Angels witness confessions. There's so many things that angels do. They receive departed spirits. They give laws. They guard the tree of life. They give revelations. They impart God's will. They bring answers to prayers. Yes, angels bring answers to prayers. Mm. I'm not going to get into what they're called. There's going to be more teaching on this. There's so much information about angels in the Word of God, saints. 104 scriptural sightings where they've appeared to men in the Bible. Come on, saints. The blood of Jesus gives me access to his throne room. I have grace and mercy. You have grace and mercy. If you realize how powerful the Holy Spirit in you is, you would understand that you're not only representing him when people are looking at you on Facebook or on YouTube or in church or when you're praying and preaching and prophesying in public, the holy angels see you when you're sleeping. They know when you've been good and bad and ugly and all that good stuff. They see everything and they're writing everything down. Saints, be a somebody when nobody's watching. 